Anyone else want to take a stab at the best value proposition I've heard in this general value prop? Every week you hear it from one person in this room. Essentially, the capabilities of your business means me too. I'm in the game. I can sell insurance, Lee, you got everything you need. You got all the capabilities to sell it. Marty, you've got everything you need to be a successful realtor. Capability simply means you're in the game. What does your general value proposition mean? It means I'm different, right? It means, hey, I've got something that's different than anyone else, okay? And what's your customer specific value proposition mean? Anybody want to take a guess? Tailored to you. What's that? Tailored to you. Tailored to you, yes. But what does it mean in general? Customer value proposition. Yep. It means I'm the best. It means I have what's the best for you. I'm the best for you. Right? That's the three things we're going to talk about. Me too, capabilities. We're all here because we have capabilities. I'm different. And a customer specific value pro I'm the best. So here's an example, rental cars, Hertz, Enterprise, and Avis, all rent cars, SUVs, trucks, at, at suburban locations and airports, right? Their capabilities are essentially the same. Phil Gator's gonna love this, because now let's go to the marketing slogans, right? What does Avis say? We try harder, right? Enterprise says what? Anybody? We'll yeah, we'll pick you up. And Hertz, which I don't even, I, I was looking around, they're gold. We'll get you there? Is that what it is? I had, I'm a Hertz Gold member, and they always say we're the gold standard. Okay, so let me give you a real world example. They all rent cars, that's their capabilities. Their general value proposition is we'll pick you up, we're the gold standard, or we try harder. My mother's in Florida for one month. What does she do? She calls Enterprise because they will pick her up. Okay, that general value proposition stuck with her. Let me break these down now, capability-wise. What does capabilities mean? What you do, how you do it, how many you have. When I started Regali Packaging, one of the first things I did was I developed a, a capabilities brochure, okay, that basically said everything we do. And most of our customers weren't buying all this stuff. And I didn't generate dollar one from this brochure in the next 11 months, and I'll tell you why in a second. Because it just simply means me too. There's a million packaging people in the world. So no business there. What's the value proposition mean? What's your general value proposition? I'm different. Okay. Marty, your value proposition stuck with me. You sold every house you listed. If I'm thinking about selling a house, I'm thinking about that. You know, JJ, you said I'm going to save you money. That sticks with everybody. It's a general value proposition. There is one value proposition in this room that I think is the simplest most effective value proposition in this group. Anyone want to take a guess? I'm sorry, Des? Best product. Best that's good. That was very good. Anyone else want to take a stab at the best value proposition I've heard in this general value prop? Every week you hear it from one person in this room. <laughs> Norm Roth. What does Norm Ross say? Today was a little different, but every week, what does he say to us? Yeah. I want to help, right? Yeah, grow your business. How many people in this room have met or spoken with Norm Ross? Show of hands. Okay, because every week he stands up, Norm Roth, North Sales and uh, Ross Sales Enhancers. I'm here to help, no charge to you. Wow, who doesn't need help? I need help. That is effective, simple, and it gets to the point, and you've connected with a lot of people because of it. Let's take a page out of his book. Let's make a general value proposition for ourselves that's effective. All right, here's a quick story. My wife's Uncle Buzz starts an insurance agency in the early 60s, okay? He is struggling. High school graduate, doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Finds out that he can make people laugh. So he has these open houses, okay? And at the start of each open house, he starts writing stories because people are afraid that they might not, he might not be able to insure them. They're high-risk pre-existing conditions, right? So he starts writing fictitious stories to open up each of his open house seminars. 
It gets people laughing, and what happens? They feel good. So this is not a true story, but this is how he would open up his, his seminars, okay? And he wrote this. Dear Mr. McCutcheon, I'm writing in response to your request for additional information concerning my accident. In block three of the accident form, please note I put poor planning as the cause. I trust the following details will help. I'm a bricklayer, and on the day of the accident, I was working alone on the roof of a 10-story building. When I completed my work, I discovered I had 250 pounds of bricks left. Rather than carry them down, I decided that I'd lower them in a barrel with a pulley that was attached to the top floor. Having secured the rope at the ground level, I went back up to the 10th floor and swung the barrel over the side and loaded 250 pounds of bricks in there. You will note in block 11 of the accident report that I weigh 135 pounds. <laughs> Due to the surprise of my being jerked off the ground so suddenly, I lost my presence of mind and forgot to let go of the rope. Needless to say, I proceeded at a, rapid ra a rather rapid rate up the side of the building. In the vicinity of about the fifth floor, I met the barrel <laughs> coming down. This explains the fractured skull and broken collarbone. Slowed only slightly, I continued my rapid ascent, not stopping until the fingers of my right hand were two knuckles deep into the pulley. Fortunately, by this time, I had regained my presence of mind and was able to hold tightly to the rope in spite of tremendous pain. At approximately the same time, however, the barrel of bricks hit the ground, breaking out the bottom of the barrel. Devoid of weight of the bricks, the barrel now weighed 50 pounds. I refer you again to my weight in section 11 of the accident <laughs> report. <laughs> As you might imagine, I began a rapid descent down the side of the building. Again, in the vicinity of the fifth floor, I met the barrel, this time coming up. This accounts for the two fractured legs and the lacerations of the lower part of my body. The second account with the barrel slowed me enough to lessen my injuries when I fell into the pile of bricks on the ground and fortunately, only three vertebrae were cracked. <clears throat> I'm sorry to report, however, that as I lay there on the bricks in pain and unable to stand, I once again lost my presence of mind and let go of the rope. That resulted in the additional injuries <laughs> listed on the accident report. I trust this explains why I have not come into your office to complete a detailed report as you requested in your letter. Very truly yours, John Brown. So the point is, you get people laughing, and he wrote a lot of business that way. So in the end, as we move to customer value proposition specifically, are we asking our customers what they value in us? And if you understand what they value in us, our current customers, you can start developing a customer value proposition. Ask open-ended questions. Understand so that you are the best option for them. Okay? That allows you, and then all of a sudden you have market-driven propositions. So the more, in summary, that we give a general proposition to each other and to everyone else that we're talking to, I think the more business we'll all get. Thank you for your time.